Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. I got approved at 524 for a new Chase credit card, and I'm going to tell you all about it. But before I do, I would ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already, and if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So Sunday, on a whim, I decided to see if I could bypass the Chase 524 rule. I applied for the Chase Sapphire Preferred, even though I knew I had five new credit cards in just the last 13 months, never mind the last 24 months, I wanted to see what would happen. Now, I expected I would probably be rejected or at best put off, and maybe I would have to call in to see if I could convince them to approve me. But instead, I got instantly approved for a credit line of $17,300. Now, why would Chase do that? It is very hard to say. Now, I have said in the past that I don't believe the Chase 524 rule is necessarily set in stone. It obviously is an unwritten rule. It's not something that Chase puts out there publicly and says they won't approve you if you have five or more new accounts in the past 24 months, but it is widely acknowledged through many data points. But I always thought there must be some other trip wires there where Chase would make some exceptions depending on how your credit behavior looks, maybe what your income is, and maybe other factors. And by the way, I've gotten some grief for saying that. Some people said, oh, you shouldn't tell people this. They're going to get hard inquiries for no good reason because you're telling them that you can bypass Chase 524, but I just did it. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should do it. But anyway, I was at 524 and I got approved by Chase. And so I want to look a little closer at some clues as to why it may have happened. But before we do that, I'm going to take a little stroll with you down memory lane so you can see that I did get five cards within the last 13 months. And since I've done unboxing of all those cards in previous videos, it's very easy to show it to you. Back in August of 2018, it was the Uber Visa. In January of 2019, we had the Wells Fargo Propel card and the uh, Capital One Saver Rewards card. Then in Mind March, it was the Discover It Miles card, which brings us to four. And then just last month, the fifth card was the Apple card, which I lit on fire. So five cards in 13 months, you would think that I would not be approved by Chase, and I'm not really sure why I was. Like I said, I applied on a whim, took that hard inquiry so you wouldn't have to. So why did Chase approve me? Well, again, it is hard to say, but I have a few theories of what could be true, none of which I can actually prove. Number one, it may just be that the Chase 524 rule is more flexible than we think it is. I was right on the cusp at five new cards in the last 24 months, but not over five, so going one beyond that is not necessarily a big deal. Those last five cards that I had, none of them were from Chase, so I had not gotten previous bonuses from Chase, so Chase didn't necessarily you know, have something against me for maybe getting a bonus and then not using their card again. And it's possible that that recent history did not make me look like a card churner exactly, because even though I had five new cards, two of those cards did not have sort of the traditional bonus that you can get and then just run away from the Discover It Miles card. You only get your bonus at the end of the first year and it is based on the spending that you did. So that's a card that is going to double your first year rewards to essentially 3%, but that's only after a full year and after it knows how much you have spent. So that could be something that worked in my favor. The other thing that could have worked in my favor is the Apple card, which does not have any sort of sign up bonus. So if you were a true churner and you had gotten five new cards in the past 24 months, well, all of them probably would have had a sign-up bonus where you could just spend X amount and then essentially sock drawer that card. But if that were true, it would almost mean that a human would have had to have looked at my application and I was instantly approved. So nobody looked to see what kind of bonuses I had got or which cards I had specifically got. I got instantly approved using whatever algorithm uh, is used. There was no special offer. I wasn't signed in. I went completely cold and applied for that card and was approved for it. So I decided to see if something was going on with my credit reports that would give me a clue. Now I looked at my Experian credit report and I noticed that only four of the cards that I had been approved for were on the Experian report. The Apple card that I just got 
was not on the Experian credit report. Now, Apple and Goldman Sachs were using TransUnion for approvals, so it's possible that it had not made it to Experian yet in terms of being reported, even though it was showing up on TransUnion. So you could say, well, maybe Chase looked at that and it looked like I was only at 424. So then I looked at Capital One's CreditWise tool. Now, the CreditWise tool will show you inquiries from Experian and TransUnion, and looking at them, I can see that over these last 13 months, depending on the card we're talking about, some of them show up as being inquiries uh, via Experian, some of them show up as inquiries via TransUnion, some of them show up as inquiries with both of those credit reporting agencies. Now, of those five cards that I talked about, there is not one credit agency that showed inquiries for all five of them. However, it does show that Chase looked at both Experian and TransUnion when looking at my application, which would lead me to believe that Chase could very easily see that I had five new accounts open within the last 24 months. So did Chase's systems just not pick up on the fact that I was at 524 or is there something more going on? Now I do have some other things that are working in my favor if Chase is a little loosey-goosey on the 524. I have a long credit history. I don't have any lates on any of my credit reports. I do have some history with Chase, including two cards that I use on an occasional basis, but not ones that I make my primary card. I do have spending on my other cards. I don't have, you know, a history of just getting the uh, sign-up bonus and moving on, so I don't know. Again, I got instantly approved, so it doesn't seem like a human looked at any of those factors, but something tripped a wire that allowed me to get approved at 524. Was it my income? Was it the credit history? I don't know, but there obviously was some factor that did it. If I'd been at 1024, I'm sure they would have immediately rejected me, but maybe if you are someone that is on the cusp, maybe they're okay with 624 for some people where 524 is the cutoff for others. So does this mean I would recommend that you go after a chase card if you are at 524? No, I have a long credit history. I was right at 524 and probably most important, I didn't really care if I got approved or not. I did it to see what would happen, a little test, a little experiment. I assumed I was gonna have to call into Chase and try to uh, cajole them into approving me if they didn't approve me uh, immediately, and instead I got the instant approval. I think for a lot of people, it would not happen that way. If you don't have that long credit history, it might not work for you, and if you really wanted that Chase card and you're really hoping to be approved, it might be a chance that you're not willing to take. So if you're sitting at 524, maybe you want to wait for whatever your oldest card is to age out of the past 24 before you go after a new chase card. But if you're like me, you don't really care that much, well then maybe it would be worth it to give it a shot. Feels a little like Chase is like that bad boyfriend or bad girlfriend who likes you better when you don't want them so much. The more you show Chase that you want them, the more they put you off. But maybe when you play hard to get, then Chase is a little more interested. Now, I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with this Chase Sapphire Preferred. Now, obviously, I'm going to spend that $4,000, and I think I have a plan to make that happen so that I can get the 60,000 point bonus. But I'm not really sure what's going to happen from there. I mostly have been a cash back person, but I do have the Chase Freedom card as well well, and the Chase Sapphire Preferred has that 25% boost if I move the points from the Chase Freedom into the Chase Preferred account, combine those points, and then use them toward travel, I could get even 25% more. So that 5% in those categories on the Chase Freedom would go up to 6.25% if they were being used for travel with this card. So there are some uh, you know, attractive things going on here. On the other hand, that 2X on travel and dining, one X on everything else with the Chase Sapphire Preferred, even used in other ways, I still can probably do better with other cards I have. I can get 4X on dining, I can get 3X on travel elsewhere, so unless I can really find some good deals via this Chase card, those other cards still might make more sense. So I have some figuring out to do. Wasn't expecting to necessarily get approved, but I did it all for you. So I'm excited to have given the Chase 524 rule a little bit of a 
black eye here and it just goes to prove what I've said in other videos that just because a lot of people on the internet tell you that something is true it does not necessarily mean that it is true in every situation I'm sure the Chase 524 guideline is very strong for most customers but that doesn't mean that there isn't some wiggle room here and there so my advice to you would be to do your own due diligence figure out where you are how bad you want it whether you're willing to take a hard inquiry to test the so-called rules that you are hearing and see what happens from there. That is it for this video. Thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews, talk personal finance, talk deals, and all sorts of other fun stuff too. Thanks for watching. Bye.